of from hearing the drama, they come to understand that there is happiness that occurs many times than the special happiness. So the person who knows that there is this happiness that excels many times than the word sensual happiness will keep for the Nama happiness. So the person leaves behind the sensual happiness in order to practice to come into the Nama field. Giving up the sensual pleasure, coming into the Dhamma, the person gains Nikhama Sukha, happiness of renunciation. And people say, even by entering the meditation center, I feel so good, I feel so calm, even by entering the meditation center. So it is the beginning of getting the happiness of renunciation. As the person becomes fed up, bored with essential happiness, coming into the meditation center, the person starts experiencing Nikmanasuka, happiness of renunciation. When technically to be become a meditation, in order to be free from the gravity of defilement, the person experiences more of Nitama Sutta, happiness of renunciation. By being mindful continuously every single second, the person gives up the sensual happiness and gains Nitama Sutta, happiness of renunciation. The other part is Sabi Veda Sutta, the happiness of seclusion. When the person is secluded away from a companionship, there is happiness of seclusion. Being away from companionship of friends, partners, husband, wife, one day is the happiness of seclusion. Even if one may be staying alone, but if the person and wife fantasizing, daydreaming, then there will not be seclusion. There should be seclusion away from defilement. So in this way, seclusion means having seclusion away from the companionship, away from the companionship of present being, away from the companionship of being of defilement, away from the companionship of daydreaming or fantasizing. It is a plain in Bali as Eko Upatatu, meaning staying alone in seclusion, stay alone in seclusion away from the companionship of person being as well as the evolved. Coming to the meditation center to practice, one should not have companionship. One should not have companions in the practice. Not having companions in the practice, one does not need to have conversation with the companion. But even then, some of the persons, some of the people may still be talking in the mind, chatting in the mind, thinking it will be good to see this person, that person. In this way, it can be fantasizing, daydreaming, chatting in the mind. If the person is fantasizing, daydreaming, chatting in the mind, there will be companionship of the father. 
and yet this mom comes to sit out and said the text we say there can be no doubt in your hatred and there can also be creating one thing for good things not having what the person likes that can be creating longing by getting what the person wants that can be evasion so such kind of craving, longing, having evasion, such things keep the mind as it is, the mind will not be calm. One should have fire to make up, one should have seclusion of the body, as well as jigga to make up, seclusion of the mind. There should be seclusion, away from companionship of present being as well as the development. Having seclusion away from the companionship of present being development, it is happiness. And it is very good and in body it is called Eko Mubatatu. So we will not to come in the happiness of diffusion, staying alone as well as the mind away from the companionship of the bond. So if the mind is left alone without practice, one will not be refraining from things that should be refraining from. If one fails to refrain from things that should be refrained from, one will not gain delusion and one will not have happiness of delusion. So that's why one should make the mind work. It is not the kind of work that concerns the natural pleasure that one should practice so that the mind will not turn into natural pleasure. In order to be worthy of giving up the natural pleasure, one should keep the mind controlled so that the mind will not go on to natural pleasure. When the mind does not go on to pleasure, pleasure, there will be happiness. Atabata means the person who is not negligent. Atabata means non-negligent, non-failure, not having to be mindfulness. Usually, people lack mindfulness. And they are spending much of their time with natural pleasure. Most of the people lack control of their mind. They cannot control their mind. They cannot control their verbal action. They cannot control their bodily action. Without having protection with mindfulness, there will be deformment. Since the mind does not have protection of mindfulness, then the mind will not be sick, the mind will not be secure. Lacking mindfulness, the mind is not sick or secure, and thus the mind will not be free from deformment, and there will not be peacefulness. In order to keep the mind protected, one needs mindfulness. The person needs mindfulness every single second so that the mind will be guarded, protected. Without the Vipassana practice, the mind will not be guarded or protected. So one should practice the Vipassana 
in order to keep the mind hearted, protected, so that mindfulness will become stronger and stronger hour after hour, day after day. Practically, diligently, continuously, every single second, just be mindfulness will become stronger and stronger and go on with the happiness. Asadatu means the person who does not lack mindfulness. The person who constantly, continuously has mindfulness is called Asamata. As a person, as a human being, one should avoid from wrongdoing. One should avoid the mental misconduct that can lose the mind. If there are mental misconduct, the mind will be rude, growth, burning, suffering, and disgusting. It is important to refrain from wrongdoing by body, speech, and mind. So every human being has the responsibility to refrain from wrongdoing by body, speech, and mind. And one has more responsibility to refrain themselves from wrongful actions by body, speech, and mind. One should not fail. One should not be negligent to refrain from things that should be refrained from. And one should not be negligent. One should not fail to perform wholesome needs by body, speech, and mind. So one should not fail to do good things by body. One should not fail to think wholesome thoughts. One should not fail to talk wholesome speech. So in this way, one should not be negligent. One should not fail. One should be Asamata. The person should have constant mindfulness. The person should practice Sikatama meditation so that he or she will be outstanding human. And in the practice of Sikatama meditation, one should practice respectfully, meticulously, thoroughly, without stopping every single second. One should practice respectfully, meticulously, thoroughly, so that one will gain the benefit of practice. By practicing respectfully, meticulously, one will gain the happiness of diffusion away from companionship of present being as well as the evolvement, and it will be worthy of giving up essential happiness. By practicing, one realizes that the happiness came through diffusion as well many times than the essential happiness. And he or she will not be interested in the pleasure pleasure, but the person will give more time for practice and the person will become Asamata, not lacking like mindfulness, being mindful continuously every single second. And in Deku Sutta, the monk promised that he will practice alone in seclusion, not lacking like mindfulness. There are three kinds of quality of Asamata. Being Asamata in three forms. 
They are three kinds of misconduct. Misconduct by body, speech, and mind. Refraining from misconduct by body, speech, and mind. One becomes a samatha. And there is medium form being a samatha, not letting one mind go on to the sensual pleasure, having a goal of one mind, so that one mind will not go on to sensual pleasure. It is the medium form of a samatha. There is the refined form of a samatha. The refined form of Atavata means being mindful every single second. By being mindful of every arising object. Apart from the sleeping hour, whatever posture one may be in, walking, standing, sitting, lying, bending, stretching, opening and closing of the eyes, whatever factor one may be in, to be mindful of every arising object continuously, without failing, without being negligent. It is the refined form of Atamata. So in this way, there are three kinds of Atamata, three levels of Atamata, the lower level of the mata, medium level of the mata, higher level of the mata. The lower level of the mata, not being neglected to be free from misconduct. And the medium level of the mata will be keeping one mind, not going on to sensual pleasure. Keeping the mind controlled is the medium level of Atamata. The high level of Atamata is to be mindful every single second. It is the highest level of Atamata. Mubhasama meaning suppressing root, medium, refined form of defilement. Suppressing growth, median, and refined form of development, there will be Upasana Sukha. And by practicing each Hana meditation, one will understand the happiness by suppressing the development, and it is Upasana Sukha. One should Refrain from transgressing defilement so that one will not be committing misconduct. One should not fail, one should not be neglected in refraining from transgression. Not failing, not being neglected from transgression. The person will be cheered by body and speech. And other people will not be harmed as the person be free from wrongful action by body and speech. And whenever one thinks about one good conduct, be free from wrongful conduct, one will be happy. Being mindful, one will not have mental misconduct. There will not be wanting to kill. There will not be wanting to torture. There will not be wanting sexual misconduct. In this way, the mind is free from mental misconduct. The transgressive development are calm and suppressed. By 
Let alone gain knowledge by gaining knowledge, be dishonest, are weakened and suppressed. And one will be Upasana Sutta. Through the practice of Upasana meditation, by practicing, respectfully, meticulously, thoroughly, Yogi will experience Upasana Sutta through the practice. In order to have Upasana Sutta completely, there is another factor, Akati. The person must assert ardent effort. When practicing, one should have patience and one should be courageous. One should not be cowardly, one should not be afraid to catch illness, or one should not be afraid of adoption, one should not be afraid of mental adoption. So when practicing, one should have the determination, strong determination that let I be left with time that I be left with metal that I be left with bone, I will practice. And even if I will die, I will practice. So it is very important in order to gain happiness, that I felt many times that the worldly sexual happiness one should have courage in the practice. One should be willing to make sacrifices. One should be courageous. One should not be lenient to one body. People who are lenient to one body, fearing of illness when practicing, will keep on changing postures taking breath in the green practice, fearing that they might become sick or weak through the practice. So such kind of thing shows that they are cowardly. So in the practice, the person should not be cowardly. One should have courage. One should have the courage to give up the sexual pleasure one should have the courage to practice diligently with ardent effort. One should be agapi. One should have. One should be the person who has ardent effort. So that we say that people who are cowardly in the practice do not deserve to attain the Dharma. Also, the person should be content. If the person is picky, choosy, sorry, then they will not have courage. So they should be content with whatever is available. One should be content with whatever logic is available. And especially, mom should be content with what is available to them. If a person is choosy, picky, I want this, I want that, and if they do not get what they want, then they cannot get it for that kind of thing should not happen. So one should be content with whatever is available. One should be content with the condition that is good enough for meditation practice. And one should be courageous. One should have the courage, courageous effort. By having courageous effort is one of the factors that is needed for the practice. So one should cultivate courage. So these factors are the 
one shall not be neglected, one shall not fail, one shall not get blind of it, after peace, one shall get pardon effort. Fulfill the deep pressure, one will get turned into Namarupa. Determined into Namarupa, one develops knowledge and developing body and Sambhota. One cultivates Vipassana knowledge stage by stage, and when knowledge becomes mature, one realizes the sensation Nibbana. One should aim for Nibbana. Sahitrata means aiming for the Nibbana. Being endowed with this quality, one should accept it in order to attain Nibbana. So the monk who asks the Buddha to teach has the five qualities. So if the monk who asks the Buddha to teach, promise that he will fulfill the five qualities. So also you don't need to walk here, even if you do not become the gender of that monk, but you should be fulfilled with these qualities to a good extent, and the practice will come to you. There will be Rupat Samasaka, happiness, suppressing the deformment, some Bodha Rupa, the happiness gained by developing knowledge, and there will be more happiness. And instead of gaining Rupat Samasaka, the mind will be pure, free, developing knowledge, and one will make unique kind of happiness that is unrelinquishable. It will be ever true. The kind of special happiness one has to change from one to another so that it will be new and unique. But the kind of Nama happiness is very unique that it is always new and new. So taking the example of the monk who asked the Buddha to teach, the yogi who has the opportunity of practicing in this 50 day special retreat, they will be able to practice diligently with art and effort so that you can realize the mana and the glory of all things. Thank uh-huh.